We're at Yoma Daf Kaftet 29. Uh, we are talking about this very interesting story that one time uh, in the morning they thought that it was uh, it was light out and they did the uh, did on the Korban Tamid. Turns out that it was the moonlight, not the sunlight that they saw. And so we're wondering, wait, how could they confuse the moonlight and the sunlight? Right, the moonlight as a, as a, is like a one one ray, and the sunlight disperses. Um, uh, and uh, so we answered that it must have been cloudy. And when it's cloudy, even the moonlight would also disperse. So on a cloudy day, also uh, the sun disperses, and it's like everywhere is sunny. That was the last point we made. And since we're talking about these kind of uh, par paradoxes where you'd think something would be, you know, would be less, but it's really more, you'd think that a cloudy day would be less sunlight, but really because it disperses, there's more sunlight. We're going to talk about a whole few things that have that uh, paradoxical quality, starting with the sun itself. Amar of Nachman, Zohama de Shimsha, Keshe Mishimsha. The haze, hazy light of the sun is worse than the sun, right? For a nice, beautiful, bright day. Okay, you can walk outside when it's hazy, right? The atmosphere is thick. That's like, you know, cloudy. Then it, uh, sun bothers you more. Besimanech dena de hala. And that is similar to a kind of a, a mnemonic or something to compare it to is a jar of vinegar. If you have vinegar out in the open, so it doesn't smell so much. But if you have it in a jar and then you open the jar, then the smell comes out because it's all stuck in there. Uh, so too, that's like the sunlight, you know, just just coming out uh, if it's not out, it's not out in the open already. Uh, similarly, shabrire de shimsha kashu mishimsha. Shabrire, like something broken, like there's a break in the clouds and all of a sudden a ray of light Light comes in that is um, ha more harmful or more, uh, more more difficult to look at than if it's just a bright sunny day altogether and visimanech dilfa and that's similar to a drip of water right the um, Chinese water torture you know drip 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 on you that's very annoying if you immerse your whole body in water then it's pleasant so so too if it's just a nice sunny day the sun is pleasant but one ray of light that's annoying. Okay, and now hirhure avera kashu me avera. The thought of sin is worse than sin. We made mention of this right back when we talked about uh, the two rabbis who said, "Who wants to be?" Who, uh, they went when they traveled. Who wants to be my wife for a day? Uh, so the idea here is that thinking about sin um, can be. Uh, the Rishonim explained not that not that it's worse morally that you know sinning itself is going to be worse morally a bigger sin than thinking about it but it's worse in terms of uh, as she explains degree of stimulation that it's going to be you know the thought of doing the sin is more exciting and less uh, more uh, irresistible than the actual thing and the rabbis give a comparison. Similar to the smell of meat. You walk by a barbecue, so oh, that meat smell, I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta have some of that meat, right? You walk by a hot dog stand, it's not kosher. It's at all, it sounds, it smells so good. If you'd actually buy a hot dog, you know, and eat it, it'd be like, oh, all right, so it was just a hot dog, no big deal, right? So sometimes the smell of something, the thought of that, of a sin is even worse than the, than the sin itself. And um, uh, so that's how we uh, explained back then that the rabbis, uh, when they traveled, they didn't want to have to think about sin. So having a wife near them, that way they would uh, be able to control their thoughts. All right. Shilhe de kaita, kashya me kaita, besimanech tanura shegira. The heat at the end of the summer is worse, more oppressive than the heat of the summer itself. Uh, I guess because after a whole long summer of it being hot, you're already like, you know, uh, enough. It's still still another hot day. Uh, so it's more, more annoying. It's like a heated oven. If a oven was preheated, even if you turned it off, it's very easy to get it back on, right? Just put a little fire and it'll be it's retaining the heat. So even if it's uh, at the end of the summer and it's less hot than in the middle of the summer, but for some reason, just the buildup of all that um, is true. The, the, uh, the oceans get warmer you know, over the course of the summer. So there's just more heat around. So it's more oppressive. If you get a fever in the winter, it's worse, more powerful than a fever in the summer. Um, why? It's like a cold oven. If you can manage to have enough heat to make hot a cold oven, that's a lot of heat. So if in the middle of the winter you feel hot, you must be really sick, right? That this fever broke through the cold that's outside. If you feel hot in the summer, well, then even just a small amount of sickness can make, make you feel hot in the summer. 
מגמל בעתיק תא קשה מחדתה וסימנך טינה בלטינה. Learning something old is harder than learning something new. Something old meaning that you learned already. You learned something 10 years ago, and now you want to go review it. It says, wait, I knew this, trying to piece together what you think you know, what, but you know, it's more difficult, easier to start from scratch. Something you don't know at all, you just go and learn it uh, with a fresh start is easier. And that's like mortar from mortar. If you're going to take mortar and crush it up and uh, mix it with water again to make new mortar, it's not going to come out well. If you take new mortar and, uh, and, and mix it with water, right? better to start from scratch than, use, than reuse old materials. Uh, so to be, that's who we, uh, that's, he said the first statement all the way above that uh, the, the sunlight and moonlight are different, right? So that, that moonlight uh, is like a stick, right? It's a, a straight ray. So what's his source is our question. Uh, Right, was, uh, was moonlight is straight, whereas sunlight is dispersed. What's his source? Because in Psalm 22, it uh, says, uh, It's comparing an ayelet, a deer, to the morning. In what way is a deer similar to the morning? Just like a deer, its horns branch out all in all directions. So too, the morning sun branches out in all directions. Here's a picture of a deer and its antlers uh, branching out in all directions. Um, good. Okay, the next line is a little bit PG-13, so if there's kids around. Amada bi zera, lama nimshela ester le ayala. Why is ester uh, compared to a, right, Mizmor 22, that's the one we say on Purim. Uh, so why is ester compared to a deer? Lo malacha, ma ayala rahma sar, v'chabibal ba'ala kol sha'a v'sha'a kesha'a rishona, אף אסתר הייתה חביבה על אחשוורוש כל שעה ושעה כשעה ראשונה. Just like a deer, its womb is narrow, and so its, uh, its mate uh, feels, uh, is, is desirable, is, it feels good to its mate every time, like the first, like the first time they mate, uh, every time after that is as, uh, is as beloved. So too, Esther was Esther with Achashverosh, that every time Achashverosh was with Esther, it felt as good as the first time he was with her, and that's, uh, I guess, why he was uh, happy to see her when she came and surprised him. <laughs> gives another reason why is this or, or uh, uh, another uh, comparison, right? The over here said Ayelet and Shachar. So why is this dead compared to the morning? I mean, this is the heading of the Mizmor that talks about Esther. Uh, so uh, um, it doesn't mention Esther explicitly, but it's one that we the rabbis associate with Megillat Esther. And so why is it, why is she like the morning? Just like the morning is the end of the night, so too Esther is the end of all miracles. The Purim story was the last open miracle. Well, it wasn't even open miracle. It was the last miracle performed on a national scale. Um, that's it. Uh, so that's very interesting statement. Wait, Chanukah was after. Chanukah is, uh, you know, two, two, three hundred years after the Purim story. And that was a miracle. And that was a more open miracle than Purim was. No, we're not talking about just any miracle. We're talking about a miracle that is going to be written in a book in Tanakh. Right? So Chanukah has no book in Tanakh. Purim does. At Megillat Esther was included. So it makes, it's a meaning official uh, recorded miracle. That makes sense to the, according to the opinion that says Megillat Esther is given to be written. But what about the one who says not given to be written? Now, what does this mean, be, be written or not? So we know that there was a, a big, a huge controversy whether Megillat Esther should even be included in the Tanakh, right? Some people said uh, it's not, it doesn't have God's name in it. It doesn't have, um, you know, it doesn't, they don't even pray. It doesn't look like a religious book. So some people did not want it to be there. Like the Dead Sea sect, there's no, no Megillat Esther. And some rabbis did not consider it to be a holy book. Um, so what's, and what's the difference? What do you mean not being written? Are you just going to tell the story orally? It is a book. 
um, it really makes a difference. Is it included in Tanakh or not? It's an official category, um, which uh, Chacham Faud wrote a lot about. It means that can you make a derasha on it, something that is officially submitted and written, you know, it's submitted as this is part of our national history, our national memory, and that be- once it becomes an official book, then you can read it in public, you can right, make the rashat, explain it, right? becomes part of the canon. Um, so that's what it means, the khtob. The other opinion says, hey, yeah, we know it's written, right? It's a book, but it doesn't have that official status. Uh, so according to the other opinion that says, Megillat Esther does not have an official status as part of Tanakh. So then it's the same as Chanukah. Also, you can write, a, you can write as many books as you want about Chanukah, but it's not going to be part of Tanakh. So Chanukah is the last miracle, according to that. Mokim la kedebi bin Yamin bar Yefet amar bi el Azad amar bi bin Yamin bar Yefet amar bi el Azad lama nimshelu tefilatan shel sadikim ka ayelet lo malicha ma ayel azo kol zeman zeman shemegadelet karneha mafsilot mafsilot av sadikim kol zeman shemarbin batefila tefilatan nishmaat so he gives a different comparison why is um, <clears throat> The 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 uh, the prayers of Sadiqim compared to a deer because just like a deer, every time it grows its horns, they uh, they they split into they branch out right. As uh, this is true, a deer every year they grow their horns again right, and then they at the uh, in the winter they their, their horns horns fall off and then they grow once again. And every time they grow, as they get older, they get bigger and uh, more branch out more. Um, it's quite an amazing thing. They, they're, they're, they're made out of actual bone and they can grow up to a, an inch every day. Uh, so this is something quite amazing about deer. Um, so just like uh, deer horns, every time they grow, they, um, they become uh, 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 bigger and, uh, and, and, and more, uh, more spread out. So too, the prayers of righteous people, uh, the more that they pray, the better that their prayers are heard. And so that's why it's a comparison, not because it's the, uh, the last of all miracles, according to that opinion, so we can explain it in a different way. All right, so now uh, we finished that in very, very interesting Agadah, and we're gonna go back to the Mishnah. Mishnah mentioned that uh, one time this happened, that they, uh, in, they thought it was morning, and they did Shechita on the Korban Tamid. Turns out, no, it was still nighttime. So the question is, Emat, Kohen Gadol, Ela Kippurim, Meora Levana Mi'ika, so when did this happen, right? When, what, uh, what, what time of the year? If it's talking about a regular, any time of the year, another day, well then the Mishnah mentioned the Kohen Gadol, mentioned the Kohen Gadol goes down to, uh, to, to the Mikveh. So it must be talking about Yom Kippur because on every other day, a reg- any Kohen can do the Shechita. Whoever, whoever gets chosen, whoever his turn it is, they, and they wins the lottery. Uh, so it must be talking about Kippur. Here's the problem. On Yom Kippur, you never have the moon rising in the east uh, during at, at sunrise. Uh, in other words, in the beginning of the month, the moon rises at the end of the night. Only at the end of the month does the moon rise in the beginning of the night. So there's no way that, uh, and, sorry, uh, right in the, in the beginning of the month, the moon rises, rises in the beginning of the night. And so not, 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 not at the same time that the sun rises. So this would never happen on the 10th of any month. So therefore, um, it can't be Yom Kippur. This could not have this incident that they got mixed up could not have happened on Yom Kippur. Uh, so here's what we explain: the beginning of the Mishnah that talks about the story that was talking about some other time during the year. One day was end of the month, and they made that mistake. The end of the Mishnah where it says that the Kohen Gadol will go down to the Mikveh that was talking about on Yom Kippur. So the Mishnah is transitioning from uh, from uh, a regular day to Yom Kippur. Hachi ka'amar, o v'yom Kippurim, ki amar barak parkai, horidu kohen gadol, lebeta tebila. Right, so on every day, they would always wait to, to, to make sure that it was really morning until the guy on the roof said, oh, a barkai, I see that it was light. On, on, if it was Yom Kippur, then they would tell the kohen gadol, okay, it's time to start and go down to, and go down to the mikveh. All right. Now we're gonna. Uh, we since we talked about the law that shechita shechita has to be during the day, and if it's done at night, the night before, too early, it's no good. You got to take that animal and go burn it, and you got to go get another animal to use for korban tamid. So that's the halacha. We're gonna compare it now to other things that you do too early. Tane abuha abu derbi abin. 
לא זו בלבד אמרו, אלא אף מליקת העוף וכמיסת מנחה בלילה תישרף. So not only if you do שחיטה on a קורבן תמיד אנימל during the night, too early that you have to burn it. Also, whenever you're sacrificing a bird, the equip, that's the equivalent for shechita, right? You break its neck. You, it's not edible, it's not kosher if you do that, but that's how you prepare a korban, that's a bird. If you do that at night, or if it's a mincha offering, the equivalent of shechita for a flower offering is you take, is when the kohen takes uh, some of the flower in his hand and he puts it into a bowl, a sacred vessel. Um, if he does any of those two things at the night before, right, before, before daybreak, then it has to be burnt. It's not pasul, it's no good. Okay, so that's the statement of Rabbi Abin quoting a Braita. He didn't say it on, on his own. He's an Amora quoting a Braita. Remember his name because we're going to see uh, he's going to be quoted. Um, so now that's what he said. We're going to analyze this. Bishlama Ola Ta'of, Maidahava Hava. I understand, I agree. If you break the neck of a, of a bird, then, and you did it to before daylight, then it's, not, it's no good because it, it's, you can't bring it back to life, so you got to burn it. But if I just took some flour from, from the bowl, right, so, and that was, I see it's too early, so I didn't do anything with, uh, you know, uh, irreversible damage. I, why can't I just take the flour, put it back in the original bowl, and then do kimisa again? Right? Why do I have to go burn it? I just, you know, I didn't do anything. I just touched it. So that's the question, right? It's not the same as Shachita. So that, uh, so who Tanela, Behu Amar La Revi Avin? He's the one that asked the question. He had the Braita. And you know what? He also was able to defend this Braita. And here's his answer. The problem here is that once I take the take it from the original bowl and put it into a holy vessel, by placing it into a holy vessel, that makes that flower kadosh, it's consecrated. And now I can't go put it back with the rest of the flower, right? This is the flower that has to be put on the Mizbeach. Because they did it at night at the wrong time, it's no good. And so that's the reason. It is, in fact, an irreversible act. And so that's the same as the bird and the animal. Okay, so, so far so good. We have this braita, we understand that um, birds, animals, uh, a flower, if you do it at night, you gotta go burn it. If you did it at the wrong time, you thought it was daytime, it's really nighttime, uh, it's irreversible. Here's the problem. We have another braita that's gonna challenge us. Meti bezea kelal, kol bayom, kadosh bayom. Bechol balayla, kadosh balayla. The principle here is that anything that is consecrated during the day, uh, anything that is offered during the day must be consecrated during the day, right? If I'm going to bring uh, this uh, flower offering, it's a date, if it's a daytime offering, which it, uh, they all are, then it has to be consecrated during the day. If it's a nighttime offering, it has to be done at night. If it's, uh, if it's something that can be offered day or night, then I can make it consecrated day or night. Okay, what do we, what's our point? So we see that something has to be, con that has to be offered during the day, it must be consecrated during the day. During the day, yes, but not at night. So what that would mean that if at night I went and took some of the some of the flour and put it into a consecrated bowl, nothing happens, right? Because since it's not valid, a valid sacrifice at night, so consecrating at night effectuates nothing. So therefore, I should be able to just put it back into the original bowl and do it again during the day. So that's a question to the Biavin's uh, explanation over here. But we have an answer to that too. Dilma eno kadosh likareb aval kadosh li pasel. When over here it says that um, it's not kadosh, right? If it was night, if it was supposed to be during the day and it was night, it's not kadosh. That means it's not kadosh. It's not good enough to actually sacrifice. If I took the kimisa at night and I now and then, then I have to bring it during the day, I can't bring it. I can't put it on the mizbeach. So it's no good. I can't actually use it. But it it does consecrate enough. To make it disqualified, right? Um, so, uh, so you know, because they did it at night, it does effectuate something, but it's not all the way, right? It's like it's close enough to be to make it to make it uh, uh, to make it kadosh, but I made it kadosh at the wrong time. So therefore, it is fact. In fact, I have to uh, throw. I have to burn it 
I cannot use it. So I did really do something. Okay, so now we solved the we solved the, uh, all of, of our problems so far, right? We had this braita, we had uh, with a second braita, and we're able to to resolve it. And so right now, right, the basic halacha is that if I do something at night and it's supposed to be during the day, it's no good, right? It's irreversible. If I kill it, certainly it's irreversible. But also, even if I just take a mitzvah, put it in a bowl, right? Putting it in that bowl makes it consecrated enough to be pasul, but not consecrated enough. To actually use. All right. Now we're going to have basically our last question on this, which is a Mishnah. Metiv Rabbi Zera. This is a Mishnah in Masechet Menachot. Interesting case. Sidera Talechem Betabazichin Achad HaShabbat. Usually the 12 loaves on the showbread you change out every Shabbat in the middle, right? In the, in the morning, right? The new Kohanim come and they take new 12 new loaves, put them on the table on the Shulchan and take out the old ones and eat them. And they stay there from one week to the other. Besides the 12 loaves, they also have Bazichin, the two bowls of frankincense. They're placed with the, with the um, bread and they are uh, sacrificed on the Mizbeach on Shabbat. So that's the usual, from Shabbat to Shabbat. Let's say for some reason, they didn't do it. They didn't put the new loaves on Shabbat. They put them in on Sunday. Uh, I don't know, they weren't, weren't baked, they weren't ready, they forgot, right? Something happened, they put them in on Sunday. This is not good because the, the loaves and the, and the frankincense have to be there for seven days. So uh, so let's say they did that. Right, so then it's no good if they um, uh, if on, if they put it in on Sunday and then they uh, burned the burned the set the frankincense on Shabbat, it is disqualified. It's no good. So what should you do in such a case? Kesad say, right? Let's say you missed the deadline. You didn't do it on Shabbat, and now it's Sunday. So you know what? Leave it. You put it in on Sunday. Leave it for the next Shabbat. Put leave it in there. Don't take it out. And then in you know uh, 13 days from that Sunday. Right, the, the 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 following Shabbat, then you will um, then then you'll uh, be able to eat it and and uh, and sacrifice the the frankincense. It has to be a minimum of seven days, but if you left it in more, if you left it in for two weeks, it's okay. So that's what the Mishnah says. Now here's the question for us. You just said before that if I take some mincha offering at night, I did it too early, it's no good. And now I can't pasul, I can't, can't use it ever again. But here this Mishnah says, if I put the, the frankincense and the bread in the, in, on the shulchan too early, six days early, right, and leave it in there, then it's okay. And I can eat the eat it and, uh, and put the ketore, put that um, frankincense on the mizbeach, and it's okay, even though it's so early. So why? Why don't you say tikdosh v'tipasel and make it pasul? Okay, so this is a good question. Amar Rava, man de kamotiv, shapir ma kamotiv. Rava says, the one who asked the question, which is Rabbi Zera, he asked a good question. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Rava, right? Um, but he says, avut Rabbi Natan me matnita kamar. The father of Rabbi Abin, he said that braita, He's quoting a braita. He's not saying it on his own. So he has a good source too. We have two Tanaitic sources, right? So how are we, how are we going to resolve this? Oh, here's how we can explain it. Matita kamar vekasabar. Laila en mechusar zeman. Yom mechusar zeman. A night, if I do something the night before, it's very close in time. And so therefore, that's considered mechusar um, zeman, premature and no good. It makes it, it's, it's close enough that it makes it kadosh but it's the wrong time, so it's pasul. But if it's a day, a whole day before, or two days, or three days before, it's so far off that it doesn't consecrate at all, right? It's like, you know, in uh, tennis, if I hit the ball and it uh, hits the net, then it's a bad serve, I lose a point. If I throw up the ball and miss it altogether, it's okay, no problem, right? It was so, such a bad serve that it's uh, not even considered a serve. So that would be a similar idea here. Um, the, uh, the, the, if I take the kemitzah the night before, the night before is pretty close. It's basically the same halachic day, but it's a daytime thing. So you can't actually use it, but it does make it pasul. However, the bread, I put it in there six days earlier, even if it was one day earlier, it's totally the wrong day. It has nothing to do with it. So what do you do? Nothing, you just put bread. It's not considered, it's not considered sanctified at all. And uh, therefore, I can use that bread the following Shabbat. Okay, last point on this. 
Hold on. If you put it in on Sunday, eventually it's going to become Friday night, right? So on Friday night, that will be the night before you're supposed to change it out, before you're supposed to put it on. So it will become Pasul that Friday night, right? You said that's the rule. A whole day before, it's okay. But the night before, it's no good. But you're leaving it in there the whole time. So when it's in there on Friday night, it's in there, it's on the, on the Shulchan, it's the wrong time. And so that would make it pasul, and then you could have to throw it out the next day. So I don't understand what you're saying. Oh, it's talking about a case where on Friday during the day in the afternoon, you took out the, the loaves and you took out the frankincense bowls, and then you leave it out on all Friday night and on Shabbat at the right time, then you put them in. So in other words, you can leave them in there all week when it's totally the wrong time. You got to take it out that night so that it'll be okay. That's his answer. That's Ravina's answer. But Mor Zutra says, some say Rav Asher say, Afilu tema no, even if you didn't take it out the night before, just leave it in the whole time. Uh, since it was in there the whole time from before, right? And so you put it in, not according to the mitzvah. When you put it on, on, on Sunday, Monday, right, it just has nothing to do with the mitzvah. So since it's in there already and you just left it in there, it would be as if uh, a monkey came and put the loaves in, right? If a monkey came and put the loaves in, it's not considered an act. It's not, a, it's, not a, it's not an act by a human being who is consciously doing something that you could say he's doing something wrong. Okay, they, they, luckily they give him us a picture of the monkey uh, in case you don't know what it is, right? And so therefore, since I put it on Sunday, when I put it on Sunday, it was nothing. So on Friday, I just, I, I didn't put it in. I did nothing on Friday. It's just sitting there. So that doesn't make it pasul. And then on, when Shabbat comes, on Shabbat, we'll take it out and put it back in. And that can start the week. And the week after, then we would, we would be able to uh, actually uh, eat, the, eat, the, eat the bread and sacrifice the frankincense.